Okay, I have returned. Let's go ahead and continue, boys. Uh, let's get another Tuscan claim. And that'll be good for now, actually. Okay. Um, meanwhile, meanwhile, let's go ahead and go boom, boom, boom. Um, that works. That's a good, a bunch of good stuff. Bunch of good stuff. We still have not united our home region, which is just hilarious. We, we've also not built manufactories, which is really funny to me. Uh, I mean, we're just, we've always been using so much money that we've never seen the profits of it. I think I'm actually at this point going to get rid of the Giorgio one because it's like it hasn't been doing too much to guard or stuff. We have a mountain port now and I feel like I should also start getting rid of some of these other ones. Like we don't really have many threats on this side. We have this one and this one covering it. I'm going to get rid of this fort and I'm going to get rid of the fort here because if we need to we can just defend our capital fort and that's fine. Um, okay. Probably want to get rid of this one soon as well, but I'm gonna wait until we get uh, possibly. Oh, we get that one. There. Yeah, possibly till we get uh, another one um, further up. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about that one yet. Uh, still though, it's good to get rid of some of these forts that are just not really doing much for us. They haven't been under siege in like a hundred years at all, since as long as we've had them even. <laughs> so <laughs> probably a sign that we should not have them. Okay, 1.32, how many more months is that going to make it? 9.31, it's like 10.7 divided by 1, yeah, you know, a few more months, less than a year. They're winning that war, but their armies again are going to be like a year and a half, two years away. I don't, yeah, I don't care, Armenia. I don't really care about your opinion. Okay, meanwhile, yeah, we want to get ready to do this stuff here. Does Georgia have any claims? They do. Huh, that's good. That's good. Um, yeah, I do think we're going to co-belligerize Russia. We might as well. Mm -hmm. And if we bum rush Galicia Bohemia, we can always have a backup and just peace out quickly enough, you know, if that is if that becomes necessary. Um, let's go ahead and get you up there. Got a couple months left. And again, I'd really... We should start checking. Hold on. Because I'd really, really like to see if... Uh, if France would join. Oh, they wouldn't. Distant war? Really, my dude? Really? Really? Really, France? Uh, I mean, that's fine. Uh, I might... Hmm, I don't want to promise Sweden land. Oh, hey, Sweden. When did you conquer all of Norway? Sweden's getting pretty big. Hmm, okay. I mean, actually, I wouldn't mind promising Sweden some land. Yeah, you know, I might do that. Definitely be useful. More sieges we could have going at once. Among other things. Okay, let's do this. I'm about ready. Mm-hmm. Two more months, right? Yeah. Okay, one more month now. One more month, and we'll be at war. Oh! No! They peaced out. Rip. But hey, we also got Sicily Accord now. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, another unfortunate thing is that Russia just allied Japan. Well, I mean, that is that really important? It's probably not going to matter. <laughs> Let's be honest. Actually, it's not going to matter at all. I doubt Japan will be able to bring people over here. Okay. Ah, uh, darn. If only I had been able to declare, like, a split second sooner. Yeah, like, literally a month sooner. Mm-hmm. Okay, Galicia Volhynia. Let's go ahead and declare on you. We're going to co-belligerize Russia. It's going to call in some people. I think it's time we do it this, though. And uh, one of our main goals is just going to be try to just gobble things up before they have a chance to, uh, to resist. Laval, Laval is going to be the goal. Yep. Russia, yeah, yeah. I. We are now at war. 
with Russia, boys. Hey, sheeple. Um, this one is 200 hours on the same. Uh, I mean, I think anyone's capable of playing this game, and if you have any experience with strategy games in general, you'll uh, you'll be able to pick up. You'll be able to pick up you for it. It, it is going to take time for anyone, even if you have experience playing other strategy games. It's going to take time, but um, I don't think there's any reason you wouldn't be able to, you know, pick it up uh, and start playing right away. You might, you know, again, it's going to take you a while to actually really succeed reliably, but uh, you should still be able to have fun. I don't know. Um, the best way to learn is, is just by playing, you know. There's plenty of guides out there, too. I've done a few, but I don't have a dedicated guide series. So I wouldn't necessarily say I'm the best for that. Um, but, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So Georgia. And welcome to the stream, by the way. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 I didn't mean to do that. I want to set the set objective of Hungary. Yeah, no problem, man. Okay, hmm. So yeah, we want to finish these battles up real quick. I'm going to go ahead and do this now. So why not? That's the only mission we have, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, also, more conversions ready to go. So a lot of expensive ones, but that's okay. It's still worth it, I would say. Oh, no, no, no. I forgot to do, uh, do stuff here. Hold on. Nope. Nope. Four to four leader. I really wish we had another... You know what? It's not that big a deal, though. It's not like we're gonna... You know, yeah, it's fine. It's not like we're, we're in a rush here or anything like that, you know? So as I guess, Russia does not have any armies that I can see in this area at all. Which is perfect. However... Uh, they will have some over here eventually, and they'll probably start hiring new ones, if anything. Oh, yeah. Um, there are no win conditions. It's a sandbox, right? So it's basically like you just try to survive. You can try to make a trade empire. You can try to make a colonial empire, which goes along with trade, obviously. You can try to do like a diplomatic game where you have a lot of vassals and stuff. You could try to uh, play in the Holy Roman Empire and use the prince electors or whatever to form the Holy Roman Empire. Um, you can be a horde nation that just burns everything to the ground after conquering it. You know, there's there's tons of options. Um, however, there is no like win condition. Um, it goes from the year. It's based on years. Basically, it's like how much can you do in a certain amount of time, right? And so the time frame is from 1444 until 1821. So we are about a little over halfway through the game. 250 or so, or. Uh, 220 years or so in out of about 380 years um and uh yeah so there are goals there are achievements in fact you can see there's a lot of achievements we have available for us this is only showing a portion of them the ones we could get uh there are currently 295 achievements in the game i just looked in steam um and i have 95 of those so those give you some goals to work towards right there are plenty of goals and lots of those are campaigns that'll take you dozens of hours each um, and those, and some of them are challenging, some of them are easy. Um, some of them will take a couple minutes, some of them will take, again, like 20, 30 hours or a whole campaign. Um, but in any case, you kind of set your own goals, you know? Uh, well, that is short in comparison to Civ, but that's because that, yes, it is one day. So, like, I'm going day by day for the whole game, right? So it's every, instead of, each turn is one day. So there's actually a lot more turns than uh, than any Civ game would have. Um, but uh, it, that's because it's not really a, this is not really a turn-based game in the same sense that um, that uh, Civ is. It's more real-time, but just possible, if anything. That's, that's the more accurate way to describe it, I would say. Um, yeah. It's, it's a little different, right? Uh, not to mention, so like the one of the big differences is that Civ, don't, don't, it's, this is just like being, being silly by the way, um, be, being too lazy to manually split it up so I just keep hitting the, the, the hotkey. Um, one of the big differences, give me a second, um, 
Okay, there we go. One of the big differences is that this game is, at, whereas Civ is like, you start in the ancient era, right? Whatever it's called in whatever Civ game, right? Um, I haven't played Civ Five in a long time, but, um, you know, you start, uh, although I have, I think, like, you know, a few hundred hours in that. Um, you start in the, the ancient era, whatever, right? Um, and you take one civilization through a lot of stuff. So you start with, like, uh, you start with, you know, archers, or uh, slingers even. You start with, like, slingers and warriors, and you eventually end up with, like, nukes, right? This game is, this game is more, eh, so here's the thing, it's not historically accurate per se, but it is more of, like, a historical sandbox, right? And so with that, it does, it does, in terms of, like, units maintain pretty decent historical accuracy in that you never, like, you literally, you start the game with three types of units, infantry, cavalry, cannons. They get better as you go through, actually, you don't even start with cannons, so you start with infantry and cavalry. You get cannons pretty early on, and then throughout the whole game, they get better, but it's not like you really evolve in any way. Um, it is focused on one time period, basically, it, or, you know, roughly, like, two time periods, I guess. There's not, it's not like there's, you know, time period is kind of a general term anyways, but um, you get what I mean, right? It's like, uh, it, ro it roughly focuses on the Renaissance, like the end of the Renaissance, going into the early modern period of history, um, colonialism, Napoleonic Wars, and that's it, right? So it's not like there's a lot that changes uh, in terms of warfare tactics and everything in that time period. Not a ton. Uh, obviously, there are plenty of changes, right? But in overarching terms, it's not like, uh, you know, there weren't tanks in any point in that time frame. So, stuff like that. So, in any case, um, so that's something to be aware of, right? It's not, it's not a forward X game in the traditional sense, especially because at the start of the game, like, you see how everything... Actually, hold on. Here's something I could show you. This is the start of the game, the map at the start of the game. Uh, this is the starting map. And so one thing you can notice, obviously, unlike another difference between it and Civ, is that unlike in Civ, there's no balance, per se. It is historically based at the start of the game. Um, there is no... It's not like a randomized start. It's slightly randomized. But uh, in general, you're going to pick a country and play through that country in the position they were in in the year 1444. November 11, 1444, right? So if you, for instance, go ahead and uh, you want you want to play France. France actually starts with uh, some challenges ahead of them, but still pretty strong. If you want to start as you know Albania, a one province minor here that is a basically prone to be conquered by the Ottomans, the most powerful country in the game, you know then you're going to have to try to figure out a way to deal with that. There's no, it's not balanced in that sense. Albania does not have the same amount of power as the Ottomans, because they didn't. Um, but that makes it fun, because you can try, that's what a lot of those challenge runs are about, those achievements, is that it's more like, I'm going to try to take this country that historically got wiped off the face of the earth. Like I, right now, am playing Byzantium, which historically got conquered in 1453, I believe, 54, one of the two. They got conquered like within 10 years of the start of the game, so they only exist with a few provinces. I started with them with that much, and look how much I've grown it since then. You know, this is a time lapse, you know. And so Byzantium, me, grew a ton over the course of the game, and that's one of the fun things, right? Historically, they basically died at the start of the game, but you, but you can take over, and now I have taken them from being, you know, deathly ill country to being the uh, strongest country in the game. <laughs> I think. I'm not actually sure about that. We're testing that right now by going up against probably the second strongest. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, that feature, I believe, is one of the, in one of the DLCs. Which, by the way, I will warn you, if you are thinking about getting this game, that is one of the negatives of this game, is that there are a lot of expansions and DLCs that are, uh, some of which are not as important or not as useful, but some of which are pretty good and helpful to have, um, and they, like, are $15 each on average, some are 10 some are 20 so, you know, 
uh, the base game is playable, the base game is still fine, but, uh, and it's actually, they changed some stuff to make it better, but, um, just be warned, that is a thing. <laughs> There's, uh, they like their DLC, um, most of the DLC are, are worth it on their own terms, I guess, but, I would say, in my opinion, but some people disagree, and I might be biased. Because uh, my channel revolves around these games, you know. I fully admit I could be biased. I try not to be, but, you know. Um, in any case, it's good to let people know before they get in the game. Uh, but one uh, one thing, the suggestion that a lot of people say to people getting into these games, um, the Paradox games, and that I will say to you if you decide to, is what the best thing to do is, is uh, basically go ahead and... Uh, get the base game, play the base game for 30, 40 hours, a couple campaigns worth, uh, starting campaigns, which are only going to last a little bit, get a feel for the game, and if you like it, then start to buy the DLC, and also wait for the DLC to be on sales, like Steam sales, you know, because when there are Steam sales, they do actually knock most of the DLC down to 50% off or more, um, so it, can, it if you do that, you can get a bunch of them for pretty cheap, right? So, um, so they're at least pretty nice about that, um, but, uh, yeah. But in, in any case, the other thing is, it's not like they're just doing DLC just to, for the sake of, um, of doing DLC. Uh, a part of it is that that's how they keep developing the games and adding a lot of new stuff. Um, so, like, you know, this game came out in 2013, I think, um, and it still gets regular updates, it still gets bug fixes, it still gets major changes to it, you know? So it's not like they're just greedy, you know? They just they, they have to make money to support stuff, obviously. You know, any company does. So Each country does have unique perks. They're not it's not so it's not so abstracted like uh, Civ is. It's more like um you take your country down these idea group paths, which you get from tech. There's like a 32 level, 32, 31, 31, 30, 32, I think, levels of tech in the game. Um, you start at level 3, as most European countries, and you go to 32 by the end of the game. So every 15 years or so, you go ahead and... Um, uh, and at certain levels, you unlock access to idea groups, which basically are ways you can push your country in certain directions, right? So if I want to be a particularly militarized, um, very high quality of troops country, I will take quality ideas, which I have done this time. And you can see, again, you might not know what all these numbers mean, but infantry combat ability plus 10%. Basically, my infantry fight 10% better. They do 10% more damage. Um, oh, yes, that sounds good. Why is he chosen? Um, cavalry, this one in the same group is... Uh, Cavalry are 10% better. Artillery, right? And there's some other ones, too. Um, but uh, beyond that, every country has access to the same groups here, um, with some exceptions. But uh, but you also, every country has its own, has similar effects that are based on what country they are. Right? These ones up here, and these ones up here. Um, so every country does have some different flavoring to them. Uh, beyond that, there's different government forms, so we are an empire. Other There's republics, there's theocracies, there's t -t 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 horde governments, there's tribal confederations, like in North America, right? Because you can play as, like, a, countries in every continent. Well, except Antarctica. Or Australia, actually. <laughs> um, you can't start in Australia, at least. You can colonize it, but... Anyways... I mean, that's the thing, Sheeple. This is a if, this is a game that, if you were into this type of game, you can get a lot of playtime out of. I have 1,664 hours in this game. So if you, if you like it, you'll love it, <laughs> right? That's kind of it's you know that's a caveat. Now, um, if you don't like it, then you know it might just collect dust. But still. Anyways, I like this, actually. I don't normally uh, pitch the game to people or describe the game to people like this. It's kind of fun. Because it's kind of hard to describe all at once to someone. I'm doing, I'm doing my best, you know? Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay, we're actually doing really well against Russia here. I'm surprised. Yeah, sounds good. Um, I guess uh, the one of the basically, I guess well, probably one of the more important parts is the very basics of the game is that um, beyond my armies, which you can see, thirty thousand troops here in this army, right? Uh, these ones are thirty thousand. I just split them up, right? Um, and then you fight like these guys are doing right here. Um, Austria to Co oh really? That's interesting. Um, Beyond that, though, like the stuff you see on the map and gaining provinces, which I'll show you. You did ask about that. I'll show you how you actually conquer provinces in a second. But um, beyond that, that's that's annoying. Um, hmm. Well, yeah, it would still be fine. Uh, beyond that, um, the the basic resources are up here. So like, there's money, right? Uh, manpower, sailors, which is like manpower for ocean for boats, uh, stability. Corruption, prestige, legitimacy, power projection. You don't have to worry about what those are, obviously, but uh, I know. But um, but probably the most important are these three. Administrative power, diplomatic power, and military power. Which basically you get every month based on... You get a base amount of three per month. And then you get some based on your ruler's stats. And you can have advisors that you pay for. And what you, they also give you extra bonuses. But you pay for them... They give you these points, and these points are what you use for basically everything, right? So, like, for conquering, you don't have to use them for conquering provinces necessarily. If you have a Casus Belli, uh, a cause for war, you can take something without any additional cost. Uh, if you win the war. <laughs> um, but uh, beyond that, though, uh, once you conquer stuff in land, it isn't automatic. Or, well, yeah. Once you conquer stuff in a war, it isn't automatically a part of your country in terms of, like, integration. It's not an integrated part of your country. It's like, yeah, you own it. That doesn't mean you have tax collecting set up there, right? It, this is not obviously in the game, like, this level. This is abstracted, but I'm just describing, like, in real-life terms, right? If you conquer something, that doesn't mean you're going to be able to get taxes from it. That doesn't mean you're going to be able to... The people there won't speak the lang your language right away. Um, you have to set up systems, right? Um, systems of governing the land you conquer. And that is represented in the game with the fact that when you conquer something, it isn't a core part of your country, per se. So you can see there's these cores here. Let's find a better example. Like this province here. This is my flag, my icon. So I have a core province here. This is considered a part of my core territory. Um, and which basically means I get full benefit from it, and it also has less unrest, so it's less likely to have rebels, etc., etc., stuff like that. Good stuff. There's another country that has a core here. In other words, I'm not the only country that can, that has a claim to call this part of their country. However, this country does not exist, because <laughs> I conquered them. So, they're not really a problem. Um, however, like you can see Kiev here, my vassal, they have uh, this province here, Bratislav is their only their core, so no one else has a claim to it basically. However, this one is both their core and the core of the person I'm at war with, right? It's contested sort of, um, which normally doesn't mean anything as long as you have a core of it, but it means that it's easier for if you share a core with someone, that means it's going to be easier for them to conquer it back or for you to conquer it from them if it's the other way around, you know. Um, and beyond that, when you conquer stuff in a war, you this is a big thing that is actually somewhat different than Civ. Um, when you conquer stuff, you can only conquer so much in one war. There are pretty strict limitations. There's this thing called overextension. And essentially, uh, if you conquer too much stuff at once that isn't core already, it will make your overextension go up. If it goes above 100%, your country could just basically start collapsing. Uh, if you go, especially if you go over like 140 um, percent, there's still like a hard limit there. Or if you go over that, your country, you're basically just gonna have rebels every month, and you know uh, you probably won't be able to fight it all off. And at that point, you're you might collapse. So you can only conquer like maybe three to ten provinces at once in for most of the game. At the end of the game, there are special casus bellies, causes for war, 
that make it more reasonable to conquer huge amounts of land. It becomes more viable, but it's still, uh, you gotta watch out for that. There's never a point where, like in Civ, you could literally just wipe out a whole country at one war, uh, even if they're the biggest country in the game, you know? In this, you have to take chunk by chunk, multiple wars, spread it out. You have truces, of course, just like Civ. Um, you know, it's, it's not too different from Civ and like the, the overall stuff, like the idea of how wars work and everything there. Uh, one difference is that, um, I guess this isn't that different. There's like, you know, there's normal provinces, which we are occupying and stuff, um, and getting some benefit from while occupying them. But then most of the war score, which we need to finish the war, is coming from these forts that we're conquering. And that kind of are, are the main place. They take longer to siege. There's dice rolls every month, every so many days. Uh, and then you try to get get them uh, occupied. Those are better. Uh, they give you more war score. That's how you sort of like set up defensive lines and stuff and traps, whatever. Um, but yeah. Um, we're probably gonna get out of this war soon and then I'll show you how the peace deals work. But yeah, let's see. Do, 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 do. What else do we want to do here? I don't want to do that because we're probably going to take some land here. Ooh, hey, there we go. Um, there's a lot of nitty gritty stuff, but I'm not going to go into detail with that. Obviously, it's not necessary at this point. Okay. We should probably, honestly, start getting ready to peace out sooner rather than later. So let's see. Hold on. Let's look at everything we want to conquer. We're uh, we're not gonna be able to get all this, I don't think. Um, Russia's not gonna give me this stuff. I mean, do you have any other questions, Sheeple? I've enjoyed talking about this, you know. I always like tell, uh, talking to people about whether or not they I think they would like the game, you know, and stuff like that. Okay, that goes to Kiev. If we can, if we can, I would love to get that that uh, land there, but probably not going to be able to. Uh, and I would also really like to get these provinces. Oh, okay, I, you're uh, you're from, from England? Okay. Uh, so it starts as England at the start of the game, and then you can form Great Britain. That's one cool thing uh, that is always fun, is you can actually form historical nations by playing as other ones. So like, uh, going back to this, this is the start of the game, right? You'll notice that a lot of countries are missing from modern day Europe. Uh, and also, like, like I said, you can play like anywhere in the world, really. Um, uh, but, so like Italy, for instance, historically didn't exist until 1861, so they don't exist. Uh, but if you start as like Naples or Milan or Venice, you can conquer your way to owning all of Italy and then form Italy, right? And there's a lot of benefits to that. Uh, same with like Spain. Spain doesn't exist. Historically, it didn't exist till like uh, 1471, I think. And so Castile and Aragon existed and uh, they were merged by marriage historically and Ferdinand and Isabella. Um, and so they, you know, and you might not, you might know some of this, by the way. I'm not trying to, I'm, I, you know, uh, I'm just not assuming that, I'm not gonna assume either way, but. Um, and so you can try to do that and play as Castile and get the marriage and actually form Spain that way. If you're playing as England, you can try to conquer other stuff and then form Great Britain after a while. Normally it doesn't take that long, 50 to 100 years. Uh, other stuff too, you can play as Holland and form the Netherlands, stuff like that. You know, you can try to form Germany, which is always difficult but fun. Um, what are some other ones? You know. There, there's a lot. You can form Arabia, actually. That's kind of cool. Um, you can unite India if you play in India. Um, Russia doesn't exist at the start of the game, by the way. You know, so you can do that. Um, Scandinavia, you can unite Scandinavia, stuff like that. Um, but in any case, you know, lots of options. Um, uh, you ask specifically how fun England is uh, slash Great Britain. Uh, it is pretty fun, actually. I think it's one of the more fun nations in the game, probably, because it is pretty dynamic. You have a lot of options. You can go for colonial stuff. You can go for direct growth into Europe, like trying to conquer France, you know? At the start of the game, 
The game starts basically at the very end of the Hundred Years' War, so you have one last chance to push back against France, which is difficult, and you might lose initially, but then come back and get revenge, you know, um, throughout the course of the game. So there's some fun stuff there, absolutely, absolutely there is. Okay, so how much am I going to be able to take from... Yeah, I'm not going to be able to take any, any of this, probably. I could, actually. I could. So you can't form the USA as one of the, the First Nations, right? Um, which you can play as, again. Like, There's a lot we just can't see, but um, are there. You can't do that as one of the First Nations. However, if you colonize it as uh, England or Scotland, I believe... Well, you can actually call it as any colonizer nation. If you colonize it and then release the colony, you can play as your released colony and form the U.S. It is possible to do that. Um, you could even do that pretty early on and form the USA. It's just you kind of got to go through some hoops, you know. And, by the way, there are later start dates where you can start playing as the U.S. right away. It's just that the, no one really plays at the later start dates in this game. Um... Because, yeah, yeah, a lot of reasons. Less time to play if you do that, for one. But yeah. Other stuff, too. Okay, so here's what we do, actually. Okay. Sorry, I know this is annoying, but it's the easiest way to do this, honestly. Take that. Uh, you know, that's fine. That's fine. All right, cool. So I'm doing a thing called carpet sieging, which you can probably guess <laughs> what that means based off what you're seeing right now. You light the carpet on fire. <laughs> yeah, you, you light their carpets on fire. Outside of their cities, the fumes kill them. Yo! It didn't play on the screen, which is annoying. But yo, Sheeple, thank you for the, the Twitch Prime subscription. That is very kind of you, especially since you literally just joined the stream, like, tonight. You know, that's that's very kind of you. Thank you for that. <laughs> that is, uh, I was not expecting that, but that, uh, that is, um, that's very much appreciated. I, uh... I very much appreciate that. <laughs> Big streamers don't need the money. Well, I mean, I still, to a certain extent, they still do. <laughs> but I know what you mean. I, I, I appreciate. Um, I, I also I like supporting small small streams as well um, from people I watch and stuff. So I get what you mean. <laughs> oh crap! Oh no! All right, this is the first Russian army we've um, we've seen, and that is terrifying. Jeez, they have a three-star general. And we have no general, and we're locked in place. So we're about to, we're about to die. We're about to die. Sh shysta. Uh, no. Oh no. Okay, let's let's not worry about this. So, I want to take what I want to take. <laughs> uh, I want to take Azov, cause why not? Makes our borders look nicer. So, uh, oh yeah, so this is, I can explain this real quick. This is um, the peace deal screen. Basically, you can either offer tribute if you're surrendering, which you don't want to do normally, obviously. You ho hopefully, you won't be in that position. But if you're just starting, it's going to happen, you know. Uh, and to, it happens to everyone. Uh, but in this side, demand tribute, you can basically do a bunch of stuff. Provinces, you can make them, like, release nations from their country. You can get, like, war reparations. Basically, they give you 10% of their money for 10 years, which is pretty good, especially if it's a big country. Um, and, uh, beyond that, uh, mostly we just want to take land, so we're going to try to take land. We're going to try to take this. I was also going to give them Kharkov as well, I think. I might as well. I might as well. I don't know, it, it just doesn't look as good, though. Hmm. Does it? Let's look at this. So, Ruthenian land... Yeah, it'd probably look better without that province, and they're probably not going to... Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Uh, and so we take provinces, right? And so we start taking provinces, take what we can, basically. 
um, take everything we can, you know? Uh, there is a, another limiter beyond the overextension and, you know, not you know, taking too many uncored provinces, like I mentioned earlier. Another limiting factor in this game. Now, there are several, right? Like money, manpower, if you don't have the men to man your army, then obviously it's not going to work out well for you. But uh, beyond that, there's overextension. So if you conquer too much too quickly, other people will be like, hey, yo, stop that. And, uh, <laughs> and make a coalition against you and try to do like a, a punitive war, right? Um, so that is a real risk. At this point for us, it's not as much of a risk because we're kind of wrecking everyone. But uh, <laughs> but for most of the game, and even even for us now, we can't completely overboard or else the literally, if we did it a ton, literally the rest of the world would band together against us. Um, so yeah. Um, we should try to get war reps. Oop, can't do that. So I think this is fine. Let's do this, this. Yeah, I mean, I think this... Wait a minute. Okay, yeah, we. this is not... The green countries are my allies. Yes, well, actually, so... So, Sweden is one of my allies. However, um... Hungary here... Hungary, Kiev, and Georgia are actually marches, which is like a, a form of vassal, right? Um, Georgia, Hungary, and Kiev are all marches, which are basically militarized vassals. They're vassal states, basically buffer states that I created between me and Russia, basically, for this exact purpose. Uh, also, uh, Catalonia, as well, down here, is a normal vassal. And i am I'm basically been using Catalonia to feed them land of Aragons. And once they are finished, then I'm going to annex Catalonia and make it part of my country directly. And if you, so that's another thing, beyond just conquering stuff, you can conquer stuff for vassals, and it makes it easier, because your vassal's like, oh, this is our culture land, right? This is Catalan land, right? So then the people there are like, it, it becomes, it's easier for Catalonia to integrate it, and then we integrate them peacefully, and so it is easier that way, right? Um, so yeah. Uh, we're going to go and do this and peace out with Russia. Okay, there we go. That worked out how I needed it to. We got these provinces here, because why not? Um, I, I didn't even need to do that, really, but yeah, I was like, whatever. Um, it actually is not that bad of a state. Like, we could make this a state, possibly. Uh, and we might. And we're going to have Georgia down there at some point. And then the other big thing is Kiev. That was the main purpose this war, is to go to war with the... Kiev, or if, no, not Kiev, Kiev is our vassal, uh, with Galicia, Volhynia. So, we start transferring occupations to Kiev. This is where, this is one thing that they haven't added in any expansions or updates, and they probably should, is, uh, well, first off, it is doing what I'm doing right now, Transfer occupations, I believe, is or at least was part of a expansion, so it was a paid feature. It was kind of lame, but um, but there's no mass transfer occupation. That's kind of lame. So we're gonna actually conquer Venice now, uh, or this? Well, this isn't Venice. We already own Venice, but this is where Venice is residing in exile. Oh, that's a lot. See, that's a lot of aggressive expansion now, and that's that. That's a little worrying. However. I'd rather do this now than in the future, so I want to do it. Okay, Venice. We finally killed Venice after they've been around for the whole game, bothering us. Uh, and yeah, so this is all the Ruthenian land, right? Yes. Okay. Cool. This map, by the way, there's a ton of map modes. These are literally there's four separate tabs that each are full of different map modes. Most of which you're never going to use. Like, climate, you don't need to know that. <laughs> um, weather, yeah, look at this, we can look at the weather. It's it's cool that they have this, don't get me wrong, it's pretty crazy the detail they have, but you don't need to know that. Fort level, this is actually kind of useful, but um, some of these are useful, like colonial and trade regions, being able to see where the colonial regions are and stuff like that. Um, but uh, normally you only use like five or six. 
Uh, one of the map modes I like is culture, the culture map mode, which basically is like stuff that is of your culture is going to be easier to conquer, and you can make cultures promoted, which basically gives them status in your country. That costs Diplo points to do that. Um, and uh, uh, that's actually something I never covered, is like these points, you use them for different things. Um, the diplomatic points you use to um, integrate countries peacefully, like I kind of described. You use it to make cultures promoted so that the people there like you more. It's easier to convert them religiously, stuff like that. Military, you know, hiring generals, stuff like that. Military technology and stuff. All of these are used for technology. Um, admin, administrative power is used to make country, uh, make provinces a part of your core country, like I had been describing, is necessary to do. Um, and it's administrative stuff, because that makes sense, right? It's like you're, you're putting in the administrative uh, parts of the, your country there. So anyways though, so there's these cultures and stuff, which is kind of cool. Basically the cultures are sort of abstractions of language as well as as well as culture itself, like real culture and uh, and, and stuff like that, tradition, um, stuff like that. It's kind of linguistically based, but not really, because Romanian and Hungarian are not related at all. Um, they have some loan words, maybe, but you know. Um, but uh, but they're in the same group. There's it's split into groups, you know. So like, uh, all the Italian stuff is in one big group, and within that, it's split up more stuff like that. But, Anyways, that's not really a basic part of the game, so I, I probably shouldn't go into... I, I should not go into stuff that's going to just be not useful. Um, anywho, let's go ahead and see if we can do what I want to do here. What? We can't? Are you kidding me? Really? Oh, you know, it's probably good that I don't do that anyways. Hmm... Yeah, in fact, you know what I need to do? I think I should just piece out of it now and not take everything. In fact, I think I should just take stuff that that we have that our uh, vassal has core uh, claims on. Mm -hmm. That's still actually a good bit of a coalition. Hmm. Hmm. I don't like. I don't want a coalition. Oh, that's right. I have all these guys. I can't do anything now. Uh, that I I split them up, carpet sieged everything, and now bring them back. <laughs> okay, let's get all those guys back here. This is one of our armies, right? Nope. They will. These guys went all the way out to the Urals, basically. Okay, as I kind of expected, Armenia has already been destroyed. <laughs> Rip. Uh, I will actually take more war taxes out. Making a lot of money. <clears throat> who joins the coalition? Uh, everyone who is in the coalition. <laughs> That's one of the dangers, right? Normally, you have allies, and your allies are not obligated to join. If, if you have a coalition that forms against you, when the coalition eventually fires, if it fires, which it doesn't always, sometimes you can scare them off or have good enough allies that they don't want to fight you. Uh, when, there are two ways a coalition fires or comes into effect. One is that one, one of the members is like, hey, I think we can win, we're going to declare. And they declare the coalition war, at which point all members automatically join in. Um, the other thing is if you attack a member of a coalition... Um, before it declares on you. If you attack a member, then everyone is obligated to defend that member, as well as their normal allies. So, so yeah. Coalitions can be very bad. They, in general, are. Normally, if a coalition fires, that normally means that it probably fires, it probably fired because they think they have a chance at beating you. A good chance. Which means, in general, if you're at that point, Normally not a good situation. Well, let's just maybe let's just take a little less here. So let's end this. Yeah, there we go. Cool. I 
think this is actually probably good. We'll just wait till the end of the year and take this. Speed 4. Nothing else for us to do, basically. But yeah, pretty much entirely nothing else for us to do. Uh, truce with a bunch of people. Oh, holy crap. What? No way. Ferrara exists now. Huh. And Mantua. Huh. Austria popped out some stuff here, didn't they? Yeah, interesting. I want to take advantage of this. I wonder, yes, I could, absolutely. Okay, hold on. This is a good situation. We might really get a free vassal here in Italy, which is always good. I think I'm going to go ahead and take this last idea in this group, which is good. Tons of Heathens goes up. And we also get a bunch of stuff here. So, for instance, this is good. It basically just means that we are we can have an additional relation, which are already over our limit. Uh, and relation, diplomatic reputation, means that people will just, in general, like us more and be more willing to do stuff for us. So, pretty good. There we go. Okay. We're actually finally making a good bit of money. Let's pay off our debt if we can. Yes, we could. Ooh. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, also, I want to build a manufactory in Cairo. Where's Tarnovo? Tarnovo? Tarnovo. There. Uh, I mean, that's pretty good, but let's not do that. So we're waiting for December to come because at the end of the year there is a uh, there's a tick where uh, so between months is when most things are resolved, all right? Like money, manpower, stuff like that. But there is actually a um, one thing that is resolved between years is what is the uh, aggressive expansion, which is the the coalition value basically. Um, so we want to resolve that between the year. We want to resolve it right in December so that right after we take out whatever we're going to take in the peace deal, right afterwards, it gets ticked down. And that gives us a chance to have less people that could join. It's a little bit cheesy, but no. Nah. <laughs> you got to cheese the game sometimes. It's not, that's not even that cheesy. In some cases, it might hurt you because you're putting off ending the war. When you're at war... Uh, you get war exhaustion and stuff like that. Okay, this is, uh, good. We're actually about to be at 100 soon. Okay, it is December 28th. I almost missed it. So we're gonna do this. Yep, seems good. Uh, will they give us any more money now? They will, in fact. No, let's just take more money. Yep. Okay. There we go. And so we did that, and right away we get another tick so that less people can join the coalition. Cool. And so Kiev is getting a lot larger now, which is beautiful. Kiev is now almost in control of all the Ruthenian land. We are missing a... No, we're missing a bit more, to be fair. So let's send you down here. The rest of these armies... I want to get in position closer to, like... Austria's border. Um, well, uh, the other thing was, I want to do this. Yes, because we should be able to vassalize this two province miner here. Thanks so much for your appreciation. For yeah, no problem, sheep. Well, thank you. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for the the sub as well. That, that was totally, totally um, unnecessary, above and beyond what I expect of people, because I really just like people hanging out, you know? But, uh, but thanks for hanging out. Um, you know, feel free to come back another time and, I'll, and we can talk about this more. <laughs> um, see ya. Okay. I, I'm actually going to do that. That works. That's all we need to do there. Okay, so Ferrara. Ferrara. We have married them. We've done some other stuff. Improved relations. Only at 58. Okay. Transfer trade power to me. Send them a gift. We'll influence them. We got some other stuff. Yeah, I don't like that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. 
Oh gosh, that's expensive. Okay. Offer military access. Boom, there's another one. Oh, and thanks you for the follow. <laughs> Thank you. That one showed up on screen. Why did the subs not show? That's so weird. I need to figure that out. Pay them a little bit of money, and then we'll uh, send them a gift. Yeah, butter them up. Butter them up. You know you want a Ferrara. I just that. That's okay. Okay, and then like two more months, and they'll be able to, they'll be willing to become our vessel. Mm-hmm, just few succession in Ferrara, which uh, does not really matter. <laughs> so, Russia, I finally took it to ya. How's it make you feel? And there's Istria, nice. Good, good, good. Okay. And boom. We're about to get another vassal. And, I mean, Ferrara? is pretty good like pretty good vassal they have two provinces you know it's 30 development even so that's pretty good it's pretty good i would say um i am going to go ahead and enforce their religion they don't even care that much a little bit but not that much uh i will convert never mind i won't convert that i will convert i can't convert that okay good yeah i'll convert uh Convert Ferrara, why not? We might as well set the rest of this as... Oop, that's not what I meant to do. As Provinces of Desire as well. That should help. There we go. Cool. Mm -hmm. We've actually done some pretty good work this stream so far. Mm-hmm. There's that. Good. Okay. Mamluks is another one. Guaranteed by Persia, really. <laughs> Somewhat surprising. Somewhat. Not that surprising. Persia probably is like, oh crap. We don't want this guy to we don't want this guy to grow anymore. Um oh, that's good. That's pretty good. Pretty Gucci, eh? Um, Aragon. Aragon. Tuscany should be soon as well. Oh, okay. Mamluks, uh, just got out of internal conflicts. Jeez. Jeez, man. Hmm. No, you know what? Actually, I think you're already fine. What I'm actually going to do is this. Let's go and make some money for a while. We haven't been doing this. I mean, we've actually been making some money, but you know what I mean. Hmm. <clears throat> Give me a second. Oh. Oh, hey, League of Average Gaming. Thank you for the raid of a party of eight. That is uh, that is very much appreciated, man. Um, and uh, and welcome back. This is not the, the first time you've done that, so I <laughs> very much appreciate that. Thank you, uh, welcome raiders who are just coming into the stream. We actually already got the Basilius achievement tonight, but we are continuing because we're going to try to uh, get Mare Nostrum at some point. Oh, it just showed. Oh, it just showed up in the chat. Oh, that's weird. I didn't realize that it would do that. Well, if you guys uh just entered, thank you for the raid. It showed up in my streamlabs uh, a few seconds before, but uh, thank you for the raid. That's very much appreciated. League of Average, yeah, League of Average Gaming. <clears throat> I know you've been around here and uh, raided in the past, so I very much appreciate that, man. That is very kind of you. Yeah, I I did. Uh, as Aragon, I did conquer, um, I, I did Aragon and reformed Rome, but I don't think I got Mare Nostrum. 
Which I, I felt like I did though, which is weird, right? But it wouldn't be in here if I didn't, so. Apparently I didn't. But uh, I thought I had, but nope. Um, but uh, yeah, Aragon is really fun to do, uh, to do like Rome as. That's the only country I've formed Rome with before this point. But yeah. Anyways, um, we've just been hanging out, playing, and talking about the game, actually. Uh, someone came in here and was asking, um, uh, saying that, you know, they were a Civ player and wanted to know if this game, what are the differences and all that. And so I was, you know, for about 30 minutes, I was talking about, here's what to expect, here's what's different, here's the basics of this game, you know? Which is, it's fun. So, lots of good provinces still to get <coughs> claims on. None of those. Yeah, I definitely want to get this one. Anything up here? There is this one, Homs, which is 14. Other than that, a lot of cheap lands. So, that one first, other ones afterwards. We finished up Ember of Hindustan. I just finished Campaigns Midstream. Okay, yeah. I got you, man. That's cool. Um, which one is Emperor of Hindustan? I mean, I'm assuming you form Hindustan, but beyond that, what else do you have to do? Own oh, the whole Indian subcontinent? Is that that one? I, I do not remember. <laughs> You will have to tell me. Uh, okay, what is this general? He's bad, that's what he is. Um, <laughs> whatever. <clears throat> Austria does not really have any strong allies, which is good. Our true sense with them in two years. We probably need that time to calm Europe down anyways. So that might be good. Oh, what is this? What is this? We're gonna have a, a lot of extra military. Hmm. We definitely want to do some cores as well, some states, but I I, I just don't have the admin right now. <laughs> Starting as Delhi, restore the Empire's borders. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. That makes sense. It's one of those. It's kind of like it's kind of like this one. You know, you start as a now smaller country, and then make it bigger again. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like a lot of the countries in this game, actually. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah. Bitless. Yeah, I definitely care about Bitless. Yeah. They're out of Basra. Mm -hmm. We have too many relations because I vassalized Ferrara, but I wasn't going to pass up that opportunity. You're allied with Lorraine. <sighs> feel like maybe we should get more claims on Austria. It's going to take more effort because we already have three permanent claims, but Venetian Sea, what is that one? <laughs> I also don't remember what that one is. I'm assuming it's to do with Venice conquering the Mediterranean? <laughs> Something like that? But I don't, uh, I do not know. 